Hi everybody and welcome back. Today I'm going to be showing you step by step how to paint this pretty little hummingbird amongst all the lupin flowers. On an 11 by 14 canvas or any canvas of your choice, we're going to be using the following colors, turquoise, titanium white, and black. I'll be adding a few other colors along the way that I'll post below in the description as well as throughout this video. So you're going to need a large blending brush for this. It can either be a number 30 filbert like this or a large flat brush. And it's just for creating these long sweeping strokes and blocking in um, some grayscale for the background first. So just up and down, a little bit of black, a little bit of white, and always changing the tone up. So sometimes I'm using more black, sometimes I'm using more white to make lighter shades of gray. And again, I'm using just a little bit of water. Now I'm turning my brush and wiggling very quickly. This is not sped up, this is real time. Wiggling side to side, back and forth to create some uh, indications that there's some big stalks of lupin flowers back in the distance. They almost resemble little trees as well, so keep that in mind. You could do this technique for um, a blurry, uh, broken up background for trees as well. So I'm gonna do this a few times and then softly brush over top. I'm going to come back in with a thicker amount of just straight titanium white on the end of my brush and this is why I really like using the filbert brush because I can just push and tap all the way down for those individual little buds or little flower petals for my lupin and uh, this stands out against the gray underneath so you get that really nice highlight and shadow and that contrast and kind of gives it that 3D look. So we're just going to do this first a few times here and there. I'll make sure it's all dried off before coming in with my turquoise in just a few minutes. All right, it's time to take a few minutes just to dry this off quickly. And then I'm going to go into my turquoise with a clean brush and I'm going to squeeze out a little bit of my neon pink for after. I've got a little bit of violet purple and also phthalo blue. You can use any other variations of these colors if you don't have the exact same ones that I'm using. So first of all, with my same clean filbert brush, a little bit of water, but mostly paint, just a little bit of water to help extend that paint and help it to blend out onto the canvas a lot easier and smoothly. So I'm just going right over top of the background and then I'm gonna just um, brush gently as close as I can get to those flower stalks but this is all background and I want it to be a little bit abstract and sort of blurry and I'm just kind of having a fun loose brush stroke painting application at this point so nothing too too detailed we're just adding little bits of that minty beautiful turquoise color in between these flowers here once I'm done this, I'll wash out my brush and I'll take a little bit of my pink and a little bit of white and I'll start adding that to uh, my flower petals. All right, just before I start adding my pink to my flowers, I'm going to take a little bit of my white tinted with a tiny bit of that turquoise and just overlap here, creating another little layer, very soft, blurry, opaque kind of background here for some more little stalks of flowers, nothing really, really too bright or bold or detailed. Again, it's all just about creating a blurry background and just as long as you have that idea or a suggestion that there's flowers back there, that's all you need. So don't overwork this or over detail it or over detail this part at all, guys. All right, so I'm coming in with my neon pink now, a little bit of white, just pushing my brush around and flattening, flattening it a little bit just to get it loaded up and blended properly onto my brush. And then as you can see, I've got my brush turned right side up, handle pointing up towards the sky, and I'm just pushing, tapping, and pulling lightly where I wanna have it a little bit thinner. So we get that nice round tip to our flowers, the end of our flowers, and then you make them a little bit longer and narrower by gently pulling and letting off on the brush slightly as you pull up. 
So some areas I'm going to add more pink and other areas I'll add more light pink by just taking a little bit more white and overlapping. This will give your flowers a 3D look and just all those different tones make it really soft and soothing. And I decided to use this pink because I knew that it would look really pretty with a light uh, aqua turquoise background. Okay, so after adding most of the paint, I'm now gonna go over with hardly any paint, just whatever's left in my brush, which is pretty much hardly anything. It's just a dry, gentle brush and sweep across, not pushing hard. And down at the bottom, I'm gonna push just a little bit harder to scumble that around to make it look a little bit more blurry. Just get a nice overall softness going so that our, our bird stands out and is the focal point of this and looks really 3D. Um, and then I'm gonna add a few more little layers of lupin flowers back here. And keep in mind, you guys, that you can do as many as you want or as few as you like. So you can completely leave this section out and just have the other ones that are uh, off to the left um, so it's completely up to you guys and you can alter the colors. You can pick any colors that you that you want and that you like. Uh, even more of a, um, a crimson red with white would look really pretty too. Here I've got a little bit of my neon yellow warm. And if you don't have neon, neon yellow warm, just use a light, light yellowy orange color. I'm going to take my titanium white with it. I've got a small uh, round brush here. And I'm just going to start pushing and twisting around to create little circles for little light uh, orbs in the background overlapping you can do as many of these as you want make them all different sizes I would highly recommend that and there are other brushes you can use a filbert brush for this too if you want um, so I'm going to go over top of some of the flowers and just add as many as I want here and it's completely personal preference how many you want to add and you can also use yellow and white for this or just straight white if you want Okay, I'm gonna add a little bit of turquoise with my neon yellow warm and white. This will give me a light greenish color that will um, just bring out a little bit more of the natural leaves and foliage off in the distance. It's a nice balance to add a yellowy green with the blue turquoisey green that we've got. And this is really, really subtle, nothing too dark. It's just really, really subtle here, the color change. So I'm gonna go ahead and add a few more back here before we begin our next step. All right, off to my next brush to begin the wing on our little hummingbird. I've got a number four filbert. Again, you can use any brush that you feel comfortable with for this, guys. You know by now, if you've watched my channel and you've followed me for a while, you know that I love filbert brushes. I've got a bit of water, white and black to make a darkish gray color to begin. I'm gonna paint this uh, bird in grayscale first. So that just means black and white first with different shades, softer tones of gray. Then we'll come over top of the color a little bit later on. Now I'm gonna start with a wing that's kind of going up on the left and over. And it's in mid, mid kind of hover. So, you know, the hummingbird wings are so, so fast that it just looks like a blur. So that's what I'm after here is that I, that kind of hint of a blurry um, wing, but mostly just on the, the far left. So the very end of the wing, you're going to notice I'm not going to do fine lines and detail there. And this process um, takes me a little while to do. So you'll see me going back and forth. Um, back to highlighting here, adding a little bit more white under the darkest part of the wing there towards the center. And I'll play around with this wing a little bit throughout the video, but that's what I really want to get across to you guys is that I'm trying to go for that blurry mid hover flight um, 
a wing look so I still want to be able to see a few lines in there so that's what I'm doing is just coming in and adding some lines here for the pattern and then I'll kind of wiggle it out and make it look a little bit more indistinct there but my main focus of the hummingbird in detail is going to be the head the beak and uh, the body and um, the little the little legs so I'm going to come down here and add the tail now and then I'm going to take a little bit of it off because I want to have that little bit of a blurry um, look to the bottom of the tail too. And then I'm going to come in and add a little bit of black. And this is just going to help with my shadows and contrast that I want to have right here. And that's also going to set this um, hummingbird into the foreground and make it the focal point and really help push that um, the background even further out of focus and then I'm going to make just a little little belly here make it a little bit round I'm going to go back to and reshape this just a little bit but I'm going to come and scumble in lightly with a bit of gray and just a little skinny line that's slightly thinner as it gets out to the end and it has a little bit of an arch to it so it's not a straight uh, line that goes across with a bit of white and my Thalo blue, one of my favorite blues. I love thalo blue, especially with um, a lot of other pastel colors going on in a painting. I think it looks really pretty. I'm just going to add hints of it around the head and then pull and twist over towards the neck and down in the center part of the body. And then, of course, on the other side of the outer portion of the belly there, the body, the chest is going to be a violet and I'm going to add a little bit of my luminous rose to that. You'll see later on. So here I'm kind of pushing off that paint with a damp brush and then wiggling and that's going to give it that blurry look to the end of the tail uh, as well. So applying the paint and then wiggling some of it off is a good tip for getting that kind of a look. I'm going to create little tiny scoops and dabs here a little bit of the, a pattern on the feathers on the wings there and more of a shadow right here that wraps around the head towards the neck and then it also gets really dark here around the eye area so I'm just going to do a little loop around where the eye is going to be that little white dot there and I'm just going to keep continuing building up a little hint of a pattern on the wing that I want to keep looking blurry and then go into my purple and my white with a clean brush. I'm not showing you every time I wash my brush off, but when I'm going to going into my colors, I want to get all that black out of there. So what you're going to see me do here for the next couple minutes or seconds is just reshape everything, define, redefine everything a little bit more. And I don't want to leave this out of the video. I want you guys to see how I go about freehanding my um, animals and subjects in my paintings. So just a little bit more shadow here and there, lines, and taking a little bit off of the beak, taking a little bit off of the belly, and adding some blue in here before I highlight a little bit more with um, some of the white. Now with a clean brush, I'm still using my filbert here and I've got titanium white. I've got quite a bit on the tip of my brush you can see here and it often helps to turn your brush and hold it a different way. So depending on what you're painting, you can turn the handle right side up so it's facing towards the, the sky and that will really help to get certain uh, brush strokes down much easier and apply the paint better. And here I'm coming in and I'm going to lighten this area a little bit over top of that blue, a little bit of purple and add some of my neon pink here. Now, the neon pink with the purple will make a really nice bright um, magenta almost. Uh, 
but I will be adding a little bit of my luminous rose later on. But I want you guys to know, I a lot of you guys that are watching um, my video right now may be new to my channel and may not um, even know about these types of paints. So just use whatever colors you have that are nice and bright and pretty. You can use magenta, quinacridone violet, any bright pink. You can tint it with just a little bit of blue and you'll get that and even add a little bit of white and you'll get a nice bright color that is very similar but if you're interested in what I'm using their Holbein or Holbein and their luminous neon heavy bodied acrylics and they're um, absolutely beautiful and they have a long light fastness so that means that the neon paints won't fade they hold up over many many years and I know this because I've been using them for many years so they're high quality, great paints. If you're interested, I'll leave a link below. I'm not affiliated with them and I'm not sponsored by them. I just like to recommend um, paints that I really, really like and trust. So I'm just doing the same thing here, guys, going over to finding everything, adding more layers of highlights and shadow and color. I'm gonna add a few little dabs here for the eye of white. And there's a little bit of a white mark around the eye as well. And then a few little dots here on the top of the wing where it starts and then of course a nice highlight right under here so a few little lines diagonal like this and you can definitely use a little flat brush that would work well a flat brush will get you those nice perfectly straight lines if that's what you're after i love the filbert because i can Get the same type of lines as a flat brush, but I like my uh, paintings to look a, just a little bit looser and the round end to it gives me that effect. Taking a bit of white and turquoise, I'm just adding a little bit of a glow to the end of the, the wing there and just a tiny bit on the top of the beak. I'm gonna add a bit of phthalo to that turquoise and white mixture. And we'll add a few little hints here. Little dots and dabs will give you those tiny metallic um, highlighted little feathers that hummingbirds have that just really make them look um, like they're sparkly almost. It looks like they're covered in sequins. I don't know, they're just such gorgeous uh, little birds. They're like little jewels or gems. And then I'm gonna start adding a few little dots and dabs here for another little lupin that maybe this hummingbird is going to land on and then a little bit of that light pink with white right in here so adding those little highlights is what's going to make it look shiny Now before I begin adding a bit more detail around the eye and the beak and adding uh, the little feet, I'm going to just take a little bit off here and work this a little bit more. It's not really necessary, I'm just being a little bit picky here. I'm trying to um, get a little bit more of a filtered kind of blurry look in between all the feathers here. So I'm just taking a bit of water if you're curious and just a little bit of water on my brush to make it damp enough to kind of scrub or scumble off and blur the paint up a little bit. And then I'm gonna come in and define this white area with a little bit of blue, purple, white, add a little bit more white here, just a little bit more of everything. Now I'm gonna take my number one liner brush. This is my Princeton, I love this brush. Uh, I got a whole bunch of these new Princeton liner brushes in all different sizes. They're really um, important to have on hand when you're working on fine little details in your paintings, little branches or little eyes like this. So I'm just coming around and outlining the eye in black. You can see I've got two white spots there. One is just 
the um, highlight on or the white in the bird's eye and then the other white is a white mark on uh, the feathers on the outside of the eye then I'm just going to come in here with a little bit more white just kind of define the whites a bit more and then I made a few little scoopy um, patterns with the tip of my brush a little bit of black and a little bit of white I'm adding a little hint here of turquoise in with the beak or onto the beak I'll take a bit more of that and I'll add a little bit here and there um, little dots and dabs pulls and flicks all these little hints of all these colors really uh, make your paintings stand out and make your paintings um, extra special. So if you have the patience, take your time, guys, and go the extra mile with your paintings to add all those little finishing touches because it'll really make a difference in your work. And then, of course, I'm just adding a few little uh, claws here for the feet. And then I'm going to go into my blue, my phthalo blue again, a little bit of white, and I'll add a little bit more color here, little scoops, and pulls, and you can see all those other colors in um, the, the wing there. It's so pretty to have all those different colors together, I think. I love hummingbirds, and this is really um, uh, inspired by the hummingbirds that visit us daily. We have so many hummingbirds where we live, and all year round we're really, really lucky. Um, and they all have such a gorgeous uh, pattern and color to them. So here I'm using my Luminous Rose, like I mentioned earlier in the video, and full strength, no water, and just with the tip of my brush, little scoops, dots and dabs of that beautiful uh, Luminous Rose, and then a little bit of white to add some highlights there to make it look shiny. After adding a little bit of white to the base of the tail there by the feet, I'm going to pull and flick a light layer here over in the wing on the inside of the wing. And then I'm going to take a little bit of turquoise and you can see in between the tail and the wing where they start, it's a bit gray in there and kind of dull looking and nothing really stands out. So I'm cutting in here very carefully with uh, just my filbert brush with a little bit of turquoise and white just to make that prettier there and not so gray and dull looking. After adding a little bit more of my luminous rose here, I'm going to begin my next flower and all of the tall blades of grass. We're going to be using, uh, so I'm just using a luminous rose here, my pretty rose color. I'm going to add a little bit to the wing as well and just dot and dab. No water on my brush, just full strength around the head, under the beak, and then right here. So I'm taking that luminous rose pink, a little bit of white, any pink or rose that I have left there, I'm going to take my white with it and I'm going to push, push and tap for all, leaving a little bit of space for all those little lupin buds and petals and flowers. And then where they get a little bit bigger towards the bottom or the midsection of the flower, you're going to push and wiggle to make them larger. And then I'm going to add a little bit of my turquoise, white, warm yellow, and just start adding a little bit of a highlight on each of these, increasing my titanium white that I add to make it nice and bright on the tops. This will make them look uh, more realistic and like the lights hitting some of them, especially the ones on the top, they're gonna be a little bit lighter in color because they're brand new and they haven't fully bloomed or, or come out yet. And um, the ones on the bottom and the middle are gonna usually are uh, a little bit stronger in color. Now you could leave the painting just like this if you want, I'm, but I'm going to add another flower here and then I'm going to come in with some layers of grass, long blades of grass, right in the foreground at the bottom of the painting. I just thought it would look really beautiful to have some 
jewel tones down there, phthalo blue with sap green. I'm going to be using some of my green gold as well and just really, really make that stand out. So there's my green gold and it's a color that I've recently um, added to my paint palettes. I love um, green gold, but if you don't have it, just take yellow and black. Um, some greens you can take a little bit of yellow and mix it in, but uh, there's a few different color recipes um, for making a yellowy green, dark yellowy green color. I specifically love a little bit of all of these colors. So you can see I just picked up a scoop of turquoise, scoop of halo, and a scoop of green gold. And I don't blend them, I just take a scoop and then I push and pull, kind of like how toll painting works. It kind of just blends and pulls out um, organically onto the canvas and with your brush strokes and it's quite beautiful I love this process of painting and so it's just really really a natural realistic look that you get to your petals or your uh, grass so I'm going to go in all different directions and make this look really uh, sort of windblown and wild looking down here I want all these little blades of grass going this way and that way you can, of course, make yours however that you want. If you want to make them straight up and down, uh, that would look nice too. But this is how you would create movement in the grass and create that bit of a breeze that's blowing. You're going to make your grass look like it's curving over in all different directions. Or you could have them all going in one direction. Then I'm going to take a bit of white and turquoise without washing my brush off because I have hints of that green gold in there still. And then I'll just pick a few blades of grass that I go inside, push, pull, and this will create not only a highlight, but it will make them look shiny. So I'm going to continue to add layers and layers of all these little blades of grass, uh, alternating my colors, sometimes a bit more phthalo blue, sometimes a little bit less, and leaning more towards the green gold. I've also got um, some more orbs or these little circles that I'm going to add for little um, hints of some light sparkles back there. So with a clean brush, my filbert again, or you can use a round brush, I'm going to twist and turn bit of white, bit of yellow, bit of both, sometimes just more white, and make them all different sizes, remember guys, and you can use your fingers to soften. Uh, I use my fingers quite often when I'm painting, and I'm gonna add a few more highlights here and there, and I'm gonna add some of those little blurry looking orbs down at the bottom left where the grass meets the background, um, just to help kind of ease our eye into more of what's in the center. So if you blur around, make it like a frame that's kind of blurry, that will help draw your eyes into your focal point um, and, and ours being the hummingbird. So I'm going to do this for a few minutes and just kind of touch everything up before I call this painting done. And yeah, this was a really fun one to do. It has all the spring vibes and feels to it. Very soft and pretty. And I personally love all these colors, so I was so happy while creating this. Um, so if I leave you with any little bit of advice today, it's to work with the colors uh, most importantly before you paint. Pick the colors that you love because you're really going to enjoy your experience uh, while painting that much more. So I want to thank you guys for joining me today. It's always fun having you in my studio painting along with me. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel, leave a comment below, and like this video. Join Patreon for more and to help support my channel and my videos. I'll see you next time, everybody. Bye!